Uh, we've talked about how many of us, and then maybe you all can attest to the fact that um, you suffered from unjust supervisors or unfair leaders, uncaring bosses, racist authorities. Anybody ever had anybody have any experience with those that just been here? Yeah. Yes, I have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who just won't let us be great. Just let me be great. Good Lord. <laughs> let me do my thing. Let me do what I'm called to do. Get out of my way and just let me do it. Uh, and what, what, what should we do, though, um, in these cases where we have unjust bosses or unfair leaders or those who are treating those marginalized individuals with lack of what should we do? Should we should we should we cuss them out? Should we um, sign a petition? Should we leave the organization? Uh, should should we go over the head and maybe just tell them? I mean, what 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 should we do? All well, it depends on what. <laughs> All of those are options. She said the way I'm feeling right now. All of them are options. But they what are the, all options. But what would the Lord like for us to do? Right, 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 right. Well, I'm sure the Lord would want us to cut them out. That's about the only one that I would not typically do. But except for Peter was his boy, and I don't know. But anyway, I just think <laughs> I think that the Lord would like us to do what would bring him glory. And mm -hmm. that would be to first off seek him for direction mm -hmm. and for um, not, uh, for lack of another word, tolerance, mm -hmm. but to allow, to allow him to reveal to us what our role is, where we fall mm -hmm. short in that situation, because sometimes we want to be great, but we falling short, mm -hmm. just short of the greatness. Okay. We say, yeah. we might be saying, let me do, just let me do this. And we don't know what we're doing. Right. You know, yeah. and so we got to first acknowledge that. And then for me, I always say, okay, Lord, where can I improve? What can I do to change this? How can I go make this right? You know, like you can in, in interpersonal skills, you know, you got to be able to go back to a person, even though you feel like you have not wronged that person, but you got to go back to them and get an understanding, you know, yeah. you do. And that's hard. It is because absolutely. You got to get your flesh out of the way and your emotions in check before you can go do it. If you're trying to bring glory to God, now if you're trying to fight, go on with that same energy. Just go ahead and do it. But if you're really trying to to please God in every area of your life, you got to first own your part of it. Next, seek not and these are not in order, but seek Him for direction and for guidance, and and then go back. Yeah, and try to make amends, open up communication. Good. That's real good. Uh, and some of what you said kind of um, um, matches kind of what we've already talked about these last couple of weeks. Um, and, and one thing we talked about was, the first thing we said was wait on the Lord to establish you. Wait on God. Uh, don't try to do it yourself, but wait on God to do it. We said learn from the process. And I think that's what you said, Reverend Anderson. What, what what things can you learn personally? Uh, what maybe I'm at fault. Uh, so that's learning from the process. We said, allow God to humble your enemies. Uh, that we don't have to do the work we're trying to do it. God will, God will do the work. Uh, we said, humble yourself before God. And I think that speaks to what you said, Reverend Anderson, as far as getting yourself out of the way, um, getting your flesh uh, in check, uh, <laughs> definitely. definitely. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, that's good. That's good. So, so I, tonight, um, I want to throw us another scenario at you. All right. Um, what should you do if a person is not covert or undercover or discreet, like many of our supervisors are about their underhandedness? But what do you do when they are downright nasty? you out all right uh, what do you do when they lie 
on you to your face, slander your name in front of everybody, disrespect you in front of the in front of everybody uh, that you know. What what do you do at that point? All right, where they just it's just nasty. It's in your face. They ready to fight. Should you defend yourself at this point? Now, 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 do you have the right to defend yourself? Should you cuss them out? Should you, should you, are you in within your rights at that point? Mm -hmm. so, Bert, this is in your face. At that point, do you have the right to, 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 to get revenge? You know? Well, in my mind, I do. I love you, Fallon. <laughs> I mean, in my mind, you, I do. I mean, we know. I, I'm going to be honest with you. Here's my honest. Like I said, my honest is in my mind, I do. But it really does depend on my my um my thought process in that point. Like if, like, say, I just got off you know, up, up, off the Zoom and I was in prayer and I'm just in that and I'm zen and that and somebody cussed me out. I, I, I look at that different because I'm like, ah, right, whatever, whatever. As long as you ain't putting your hands on me, okay, cool. Like, I can ignore some stuff, but if I'm, if I just ain't pray, then... <laughs> <laughs> but but here's it. Mama said, well, some of them, right? Mama said, if somebody hit you... Hit them back. Hit them back. You better make sure that they got a black eye. Oh, she said black eye. Don't, don't come in this house saying some of us was raised. It, 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 we, it, that's not just necessarily physical hitting, but somebody cuss you out, cuss them back out. Somebody try to do, do you do them. Some of us have been raised. Yes. <laughs> yes. Some of us have raised, you know, anyway. Oh, right, um, right, 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 <laughs> right. Uh, I, I think, yeah, in my flesh, I want to do all those things. Mm -hmm. but for me in that situation and trust me I have been in that situation before in um, a, a situation where it was we were we're on the same level but I was her trainer mm -hmm. and she didn't know the job I'm trying to teach her the job and in front of a lobby full of customers she begins to cuss at me and uh, go off and tell me that I ain't the boss of her. And I mean, she just really showed her natural black backside. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, this was God. Everything in me said, get up and hit this girl, hit her. And I could not physically move out of my, off the stool that I was sitting on. I tried. Miss Pat is my witness. She looked at me and I was like, like trying to move, but the Holy Spirit was like, mm -mm. you talk about being arrested by the Holy Spirit. It ain't just passed out at the altar and speaking in tongues. Right. Sometimes it's sick because at that point I was willing to lose the job. I was willing to, you, I, hey, I was in. Yeah. How the police, I got bail money. I was there. Yeah. And I then when I could move, I just just distance myself from the situation. I never said anything to her, but as I was walking away, one of the customers on the other side, I would never forget it, walked up to the window and pointed at her and said, I've seen them come and go like you. And that girl is still here. Wow. So you're gonna wish that you had let her teach you something. Mm -hmm. And he went on and cashed his check, did what he was gonna wow. do and walked wow. out. And I, I sat there for a second and I was like, what do I do? Because she had been off the chain. Like, Lord, what do I do? I can't just keep doing this. And it was at that time I did call my supervisor and I said, hey, um, maybe I need to work a different shift, blah, blah, blah. I can't close anymore. Mm -hmm. And he was like, what happened? And I wasn't going to tell what happened, but he kept pressing. So then I did explain to what happened. And that girl lost her job the next day. Wow. 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 You know what I'm saying? That was not my goal. But she did lose her job the next day. And I felt bad about that. But years later, when I ran into her in the street, she was like, hey, listen, is that you? Girl, how are you doing, hug? I've been looking at her like, girl, the last time I saw you, I wanted to punch you in your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> some, 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 something like that similar happened to me. 
Yeah. And I wanted to, and and I and I and I literally got slapped. All right. I wanted to. Woo, woo. I was losing the crowd. I wanted to. Woo. And I and I and I saw him later, and he had a different story. But uh, that's that's some, that's a good way to handle you, holy Reverend. You, you need to rub off. On some I of the was water. arrested by yes. the Holy Ghost. I'm <laughs> telling you, Lisa. The Holy Ghost will arrest you. <laughs> Lisa was um, ready to go, <laughs> but I couldn't do it. Well, let's look at it. Let's look at it from the text. So we're talking about. Pursuing our greatness, uh, and when we're in situations where uh, people are just downright dirty about it, how should we respond? What should be our our response? David has been our uh, example that we've used, and we're going to continue with him. So I want you to look with me, Second Samuel, uh, chapter sixteen. You said Second Samuel, chapter sixteen. Second Samuel. Chapter 16. Okay. Um, and I'm going to read verse 5 through 14. Um, so someone can read four verses. Someone else pick back up after that. I got you. Because it's, 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 I'm sorry. Right. Say that for me one more time. Second Samuel chapter what? 16. Okay. Okay. Starting at verse 5. We'll go through verse 14. So I got you. Um, when King David came to... Uh, What's the B word say? The Hiram. But Hiram, <laughs> there came a man out of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei. Shimei. Shimei, um, son of uh, Jira. And as as he cursed continually, and he threw stones at David and all the servants of King David and all the people and all the almighty men were at his right hand and on his left. And Shimei said as he cursed, get out, get uh get out, get out, you man of blood, you worthless man. The Lord has avenged on you the blood of the house of Saul in, in whose place you have uh, reigned. And the Lord has given the kingdom into the hands of your son Absalom? Absalom? Absalom see your evil is on you for you are man of, of blood okay somebody pick up uh, verse nine anybody you said start at verse nine mm -hmm. why should this dead dog curse my lord the king Ab Abishah, son of Zerah, demanded, let me go over and cut off his head. No, the king said, who asked your opinion? Who asked your opinion? Your sons of Zerah. If the Lord has told him to curse me, who are you to stop him? Then David said to Abish Ab Abishah and to all his servants, my own son is trying to kill me. Doesn't this relative of Saul have even more reason to do so? Leave him alone and let him curse, for the Lord has told him to do it. Verse 12, somebody. 12, 13, and 14. And perhaps the Lord will see that I am being wrong and will bless me because of these curses today. So David and his men continued down the road, and Shemaiah kept pace with them on a nearby hillside, cursing and throwing stones and dirt at David. The king and all who were with him grew weary along the way, so they rested when they reached the Jordan River. All right. So let me let me paint the picture real quick. Um, we we got uh, this bitter, and I mean bitter, man named uh, Shimei, what I call him. Uh, he heard that David was coming to his town, <laughs> and the moment uh, Shimei saw David, he let him have it. All right, he started cussing him out, like we just talked about. 
Um, I mean, use every cuss word there was. All right. And don't act like you have no idea what I'm talking about. Don't act like y'all say me. I don't know what, like y'all always been. He used every word. All right. Came out with his mouth. Uh, and so she means is, 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 is he, he came out the gate cussing David out, cussing David out. Not only that, he's picking up rocks. All right. He's picking up stones and he's throwing them at David. He's throwing them at David and his soldiers. It got physical, all right? Not only that, Shimei got in his face, pointing his finger, ready to fight. Anybody ever been, this feels similar to anybody, ready to fight? He's cussing at him, throwing stones at him. Not only that, he's calling him out of his name. They, they, they put scoundrel in the Bible because they wanted kids to be able to read it, but you know what I'm saying? But you can replace that word, scoundrel, <laughs> with the word that you might use, or the word you heard. So not only is he calling out on his name, he's blatantly lying on David, saying that David is a murderer, that he murdered Saul and stole his throne. All right? So y'all see the picture of David's being cussed out. He's being stoned. He's being screamed at. He's being called out of his name. He's being lied on. It talk, sounds like the song I've been lied on, cheated, talked about, mistreated. That's what it sounds like that. So now how many of you would allow it to get that far? <laughs> 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 the moment they started walking <laughs> toward you, you already on your guard. <laughs> the moment they lift a finger, you start swinging. How for real, how many of you would allow it to get that far? To be cussed out, lied on stone, screamed at, called out your name, lying on David sitting there, just listen to this. David sat there and allowed all of this to happen. How, how, how many of us would be cussing them right back out? I mean, in, in, in quite honestly, some just random person just come back at you screaming. How, how, thank you. I got one real saying. I, I got one. <laughs> I, got, I got one. How many of us would have not? He, he picked up rocks. I'm picking up some boulders. All right. I, I, <laughs> he's throwing rocks at me. For real. I'm about to pick up some. Saying, saying, how many of us would, would be talking crazy just like him? All right. You bleeping, bleepering, insert your own. What? Okay. So y'all gonna act holy. That's fine. I'm telling you, Pastor, as he was walking toward me, I would have hit him first. I would have. Because my mama always said, if you hit the one that's talking the most in the mouth, the rest will fall out. And I'd have been like, my mama told me to do it at the gate. That's what I'd have been saying. My mama said, <laughs> well, yeah, that's just, some, you know, for you to be like behind my back doing stuff like that, you know, so yeah, that don't, that don't right. trip me right. out. Right. But you all up in my face, trying yeah. to invade my personal space. Yeah, well, I gotta physically defend myself. I'm going all in. And you don't know who this is. Just you, 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 you traveling, money on business. Somebody come up, start cussing you out. Like, what in the world? Right. What's going on here? David can't get his bearing straight. But what? But 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 what? Well, what did David do? He does not argue. All right. Um, this is what David do, you know. H how many know that in your pursuit, I, and here, here's what we, all of us got to learn this. All of us got to understand this. In your pursuit of fulfilling your God-given greatness, you will encounter harshness and cruelty such as this. All right, let me just let me put that out there. So don't act like it's strange when it happened, all right? Don't act like you didn't know, because I'm telling you now. In your pursuit of fulfilling what God has called you to do, you will encounter adversity such as this. Minding your own business, trying to do, be obedient to what God has called you to do. Don't think that the enemy is not on the case ready 
to destroy whatever it is you're trying to do. And you got, are you hearing me? You're feeling me? I need an amen. Just, you can just say, come off mute and just say amen real quick. So I can amen. Amen. You got amen. 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 In, in your pursuit, you amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you now, I'm a witness that you will be lied on. Y'all ain't got nobody. Y'all ain't anybody been lied on. <laughs> that you will be mistreated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People will talk about you. Yes. People will disres what? disrespect you. People will marginalize you. That's coming. Especially mm -hmm. now that you said I'm saved and I and I love God. Uh-oh. You're in trouble. <laughs> Do I got one with you? anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody mm -hmm. with yep. God long enough? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It happens on my job every day. With my thorn in the side, she's every day. <laughs> every day. So but here's what, as you are a believer, as you are a believer in Christ, as you pursue what God has called you to do, I encourage you to handle it the way David did, right? So it's easier said than done, but I encourage you to do the way he did. He did not defend himself from the lies. Don't defend yourself. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm talking to myself, so I don't know if this is going to this helps anybody because I'm 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 in it too. I'm I'm in the midst of it in this place. Right? It's so hard to not <laughs> want to defend yourself. How do you do that? I mean, lying on me is one thing. I don't. Okay, but don't try to get physical. That's my part. I mean, what? I'm supposed to do. I only got a couple of cheeks. So what? What? What, what we supposed to do? You know, David. David, he he he. he here's what, let me tell you. He said, "How we do? Let, let's see what David did." Um, David, he did. He did not defend himself, and great leaders refrain from defending themselves. Why? Here's what I found out. I did find out something. I, you know, I've been pastor for a little bit in my few years of, of dealing with people and, and and being in relationship with people. I found out that, um, that that when you are being obedient to God and doing what He called you to do, and they and, and they still lie on you, you're doing what you're supposed to do. That's what, this is what folks who are doing what they're supposed to do. You're doing what you're supposed to do, and they still lie on you, and they still curse at you. Uh, I found out that they don't resent you; they resent the God in you. So I found out. In my few, my few years. Amen. They're not resenting yeah. you. I agree. Amen. I agree. Say that again. Yeah. I said, when you are being obedient and pursuing what it is that God has called you to do, and in your obedience, they still lie on you. They, they, they still curse you out. Understand that they are not angry at you. They're angry at God. They not they don't resent you. They resent the God in you. That's where they. To, to me, when that when that happens, it, it just first tells you that as as you as a minister or practitioner of the gospel that you're on the right path. And also, you gotta realize folks be dealing with spirits on them, and it's really yeah. not them. It's the spirits that don't like what you're saying. It's, you know the spirits don't like them. You calling them out or them, them, something they cling on to like. You know, if you teach a holiness message, repent, you know, stop sinning, you know, you know, you don't get a lot of amens that, you know, which, which well, I would say, Pastor, if you can't say amen, say ouch, right? You don't get a lot of ouches that time. Yeah. That, that's, you speak about spiritual warfare. That's, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. As you are pursuing God's glory, the enemy is, 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 is using whatever he can to stop that. <laughs> so it is absolutely spiritual Warfare. You got to recognize how you fight. But you cannot fight fire with fire. You cannot fight the way they fight. This is spiritual warfare. This is not natural. We, we, somebody said we are spiritual beings living a natural spirit. Some of us see us as this is, we're, we're natural 
beings living a, a spiritual experience. No, we are spiritual beings first, living in a natural environment. So it is spiritual warfare that we're fighting. Principalities, powers, high, wickedness in high places. Yeah. That's what we're fighting. And you got to learn how to fight and understand they're not resenting you. They're resenting the God in you. And because they resent God, let God deal with it. I agree. I agree a thousand percent. I just I just know with me being in the flesh, I can agree and walk away from a lot of things. But the one thing I say I'm just going to always have to continue to work on is if you're being physical with me in my face, that's a hard one. I'm only 4'11". I, I don't have too much room to take a punch. Mm. <laughs> I just I just hope I remember all of this. When and the I, heat is I, I when the I, heat imagine is turned that, up. I imagine that many of us, some of us may have some physical encounters, but I would imagine that a lot of us are having those, you know, underhanded type deal. And that and that, that applies to kind of our situation on the job. And if you if you if you get hit, you gotta walk away, you gotta go as best you can. I just think that if somebody hits you in, in this, that, no, never mind. I'm not trying to give y'all no advice, but I think you need to, you need to make sure you're safe. I so I guess that's the question Absolutely. that I have for I you. That's that. the question I that, that I have. That's, as that's a, what I was as, going to. Make sure that you are safe. I'm not saying don't defend yourself and put yourself out there for self to be beat on. <laughs> Hit with your desk chair. I mean, I'm sorry. Make sure that you are safe. I was just trying to put some space between us, you know, so I could stay safe. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, you don't have to. You don't have to defend yourself. You can allow God to do that because God can do it much better than you can. All right. Yeah, I agree. Amen. He can do it better. He can handle it much better than you can. Um, so let me ask this question. I'm not. I'm. I'm probably just. Y'all pray for. Uh, Reverend Anderson. Uh, so, and 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 no time in the scripture you you're not supposed to. God never tells you to to go ahead and defend or attack or none of that. I, I think there are times where the Holy Spirit causes us to act. But again, that's trusting God. And that's letting God handle it. <clears throat> now, God handle it may tell you to do a certain X, Y, Z, to move to the left, to move to the right. But what I'm saying is many of us, many of our initial knee-jerk reaction is to react before going to God. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Before we, we want to react, we want to take revenge, we want to cuss them out back, we want to do this. But that's the thing where we got to say, No, I can't do that. I have to trust God. And however God handles it, or however God tells, tells me to handle it, <laughs> you know, then I move in that way. Or I don't move. Or he, say, he may say, Shut up, don't say a word, you know. But pursuing God, when I think of, when I think of, wars that broke out in the, the life of the Israelites. And it was always, they always referenced God before they went to war. They said, God, should we fight? God, should we stay put? God, we only have 100 people and they have 100,000. How do we fight this battle? And every time they uh, pursued God. Every time they reached out to God and asked him, they won. Every single time they were obedient to what he said. Every single time they, they did it without consulting God, they lost. Every time, you look throughout the entire scripture, every time they did not pursue God, they lost. What does that say? Before you move, <laughs> before you move, Seek God. Seek his answer. Seek his direction so that you can win. <laughs> so 
I don't know that answered that, Reverend Anderson. But uh, pray for me. Okay. So he, let's go back to the story. David's guards witness this. They witness Shimei's ridiculousness. They see him throwing stones and cussing them out. They're, they're right there. They see him. They said, and they're not having it. They said, do you want me to handle, the, handle your lightweight, David? They said, uh, should we let this dead dog talk uh, and curse out God's chosen one like this? Should we, should we allow this, this dog to, to talk to you crazy? David, do you want me to handle this? What you want me to do? Anybody know that it's nice to have friends who will defend you? I ain't got nobody in the house. I ain't got nobody. Friends and folks who will, who are willing to fight with you. <laughs> I mean, be honest. Isn't it nice to have folks who will, uh, 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 who, who will, who recognize injustices and are willing to get in the ring to avenge you? Anybody, anybody know that it's nice to have folks, friends? Yes, absolutely. I am that friend. Ask me. Okay. okay. Right. Amen. I told my kids, I said, I, I, in a joking way, I'm, some of y'all saw, I said, you know, the neighbor wants to fight me, and and, and 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 I need you to help me fight them. I need you to fight their kids with me, because they want to fight me. And I said, will you help me fight? Oh, yeah, I'll help you, Daddy. They, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't bat an eye. They didn't blink. They said, I got you. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> CJ was ready. I want to see how they did. They said, I got you. Oh, yeah. And then Caden, you know, martial arts looking mug, talking about, can I do the karate chop on them? Because I've been practicing. So yeah, it's nice to have folks who, who will who will fight for you. And, and, and the fight may be to pray with you. You know, that fight may be to stand with you, uh, to speak life into you. You know, uh, that fight may be to, you know, go up to the school with you. When, I, when they were trying to do Caden crazy at the school, and some of y'all said, "Okay, when we when we leaving, when we going, you know, you know, what, when we going to the school, talk crazy to his principal, they lost their mind." Yeah, that, that that yeah, that felt good. That that my church family had my back. That they're not going to allow folks to treat my kids like they crazy. So yeah, it's nice to have people who will fight you. And and so David and his guards. Said, come on, let, let me let me handle this. But David said, no, 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 no. God said, come on, let me just cut his head off. You look at the text. You just read. Let me just cut his head off. He said, no, don't do it. David said, no, don't do this. Here, here, here is here is David's response. Now, some of this is gonna this is gonna blow some of my mind. This week. I'm sorry, I'm not that safe. But here's what here's what David says in the midst of him being cursed out and yelled at and lying on him. And, and for no apparent reason, he says, um, if the Lord has told him to curse me, who are you to stop him? Leave him alone and let him curse. <laughs> For the Lord has told him to do it. Y'all see that? I'm not making that up. Y'all see that? In the text there. So let leave him alone. For the Lord has told him to do it. So somebody help me out, please. I need your help. I need this is Bible study. I need you to talk back to me. I, I don't want to preach. I need your help in understanding the text here. All right. So uh, uh what does it mean? What does David mean when he says the Lord has told him to do it? Is David saying that God told Shimei to cuss him out? Is he telling him that he told David to throw rocks? He told Shimei to throw rocks at him? When David says God told him to do it, is he saying that he told Shimei to lie on him? Because from what I read in the text, the law says thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, aka thou shalt not lie. So did, did God tell Shimei to lie on him? Did God endorse and command him to lie? Help me out. We got some scholars and theologians, some Bible readers, if you will. What, is, what does that mean? Yeah, please. I 
I know it says in verse 12, it said the Lord, it may be the Lord that will look on the wrong done to me and the Lord will pay me with good for his cursing today. So I I don't know, Pastor. Uh, <clears throat> I, I don't, I mean, I guess what, okay. This is a really hard Bible study today. Uh, showing all your weaknesses and stuff. You are all in my business. Um, I think that I'm sitting here listening and I'm thinking, you know, David had a unique walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. You know, there it don't say nowhere in there, Lisa was a woman after God's heart, but it do say that about David. That he was a man after God's heart. Not that he was perfect, right. but that he was after God's heart. Mm -hmm. And I believe when they was out, when he was out on the backside of them hills watching the sheep and fighting the bears, the lions, right. and all of that, that he and the Lord had spent time together. Okay. All right. And he, he was seasoned in his walk. All right. Give me that and one. he knew that God was a deliverer because he had delivered him many times before. Uh -huh. And so in light of that, mm -hmm. according to my faith walk, uh -huh. I still need some more time on the backside of the mountain with the sheep uh, because this Thank is you. hard when Thank this you. comes up. Thank you. you know what I'm saying? It's hard when it comes up because you're like, I hope I do the right thing, but the, the, my natural, the nature in me may have me go another way. But I want to know what does it mean? I, yeah, I feel you there. I, I, I hear you and I feel you. And a lot of us need to spend some time on the backside. Yes, ma'am. But what does it mean specifically? I want to know what it means when it says uh, the Lord told him to do it. What verse is that? Because I can't find it. Right you said 12, right? didn't you? It was 12. It was 12. And perhaps the Lord, no, this verse. When he told him, don't. Don't hit him, don't, don't cut his head verse off. Verse 11. Oh, verse 11. Thank At the you. end of verse 11. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Leave him alone. Let him curse. For the Lord has told him to do it. I need to know what that means. That's what I'm looking for. What? What? Is this, is this like some type of thing? This is specifically for David? That he I'm just going to. I'm going to say, I'm going out on a limb because I don't know, but I'm just going to say that maybe because his faith was just so strong and what he believed and walking in his path with the Lord, he just, he felt that the Lord sent him to do that. So if he feels that that's what the Lord sent him to do, he's not going to go against it. Okay, that's good. Uh, Brother Howell, you got, you, I know you've been reading for a while. You got some interpretation, Brother Howard? You with Yeah, I'm. I'm here. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you, we have the flesh, and David was uh, in the flesh to me also. Also, and I mean, you can't do anything like he's been doing without the help of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, I kind of kind of tend to uh, what Reverend Anderson was saying earlier that uh, man David was so connected and so resolved mm -hmm. and dependent on the Lord that uh, you know that he, he was just connected and had the spiritual wisdom and discernment that the Lord was involved with what was going on with okay. him okay okay that's, that's, that's some good stuff there Two things I want to bring up about this text. First, I want to bring up the language barrier, knowing that the, the, the Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew. And Hebrew language does not always distinguish between commission and commandment. All right? It doesn't always make a distinction there. Sometimes it means command. Sometimes it means permission. Uh, and in this case, it's permission. In this case, David is saying that God has permitted or allowed this man to curse me. 
maybe even because of some of the sin that I've committed. Mm. Right? right, all right, all right, all right. God has allowed this, perhaps because of sin, some wrong, some mistake that I've done. And how many know that they've made some mistakes? I, mean, I got to go through this, y'all know. Oh, yeah, that's a good one when you put it like that. You yeah. Some so, so David, what I like about David is that he was not so high and holy to believe that he had never made a mistake. Yes, he had authority. Yes, he was respected. Yes, he was he anointed soon to be king and all the nations loved him. He killed, he killed many in wars. Uh, he was famous. Even in midst of all of that, he still was humble enough to say, maybe I messed up somewhere. <laughs> and I think many of us think, many of us like to think, all right, that we don't experience hardships because of some of the mistakes that we've made. That's what we like to think, that we don't experience some hardships because of some mistakes we've made. But how many know that if you spend your light bill money by over shopping at the mall, I don't care how much grace you got, probably your life may get cut off. I ain't got nobody who's gonna be honest and real with me on today. I know y'all spend your money like you're supposed to. I know y'all are good stewards and y'all do everything y'all supposed to do. Okay, it ain't no, <laughs> ain't no probably your lights will be out. <laughs> your lights will be out. Be, it'll it'll be Black Friday every Friday, right? Right. right. You, right. Better, you better have some candles. Everybody. Your lights gonna be out, but your shoes is cute. Right. Exactly. I don't care if you get on the highway and drive 100 miles an hour, miles per hour past the cop. How many are most likely you get? I don't care how much grace. All right, there it is. Mm -hmm. You're gonna probably get that ticket. Yeah. Right, and don't um, be and black. Probably you will. Don't be black ticket. driving 100 miles. We're not gonna get into that though. We're not gonna get into all of that. All right. You ain't getting no. Uh -uh. Now going going to Bible study got me out of a ticket one time. I just told the man. I said, "Look, I, I'm really I'm in between jobs, and I needed to be at church for Bible study because my tags was expired." And I said, and I just don't have the money to renew them right now, but I really, really wanted to be at church. And when he walked up to the car, he heard the music playing, you know, Fred Hammond. And uh, I handed him my insurance card. I was just like, I know my tags is expired, blah, 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 blah. And he said, okay, I'm going to give you a warning because I really believe that's what you was doing. Right, but get down. off the street. And but I, how many, how many I went straight home. Do you hear me? Straight right. home. Right. Right, right, right. And that's not, thank God for the grace that you got in that moment, but that's not every time. But here's what I'm saying. We, we uh, go through stuff uh, uh, because of some, uh, some of the mistakes that we've made. That's, that's, that's the truth. God is a just God, all right? And there's, there's the, 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 the penalty for sin is death. Uh, so we do go through things because of some of the mistakes that we made. But the good news is that Jesus sent his son so that our mistakes won't overtake us. That's somebody ought to shout right there. Yes, we may have to go through a few weeks of financial roughness uh, uh, because of our overspending. But I believe that sooner or later, God's not going to allow you to stay in that situation. He's going to send a ram in the bush to get you out of that financial predicament. I ain't got nobody in the house. Amen. Nobody in the house. That, that, that's, that's what David... So he said, I admit I've made some mistakes. And perhaps this is happening to me because of the mistakes that I made. But David endured the cuss out. He endured uh, uh, calling out his name. He entrusted God and believed that God would show grace and bring him out of this situation. David endured. All right. I think he also, um, I think he also had empathy for the bitterness of the one who was throwing the rocks at him. Uh, oh, sorry. Let me let me stop. <laughs> um, you know, I call it the unjust cuss out. <laughs> Well, you actually didn't do anything wrong to somebody. Right. As a matter of fact, you on the inside trying to eradicate the injustice mm -hmm. for their child. Mm -hmm. 
And because you represent the space of power um, to them, they cuss you out. That's right. Um, That's right. Um, and that happened to me, I would say probably a month ago. You know, it's one of those things that kind of come with the territory of that job. But um, in my response, I just got really quiet. I did. <laughs> when I got off the phone, when she hung up the phone, and my, it took me a minute. I, the anger turned into tears. <laughs> um, First lady, somebody cussed you out? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I have my stories. <laughs> Uh, the anger turned into tears, oh, but, uh, <laughs> but I also recognized the space that mother was in, the space that mother had been in for some time um, and knew uh, that much of what I was receiving was not directly related to me. And I think the more we grow in God, um, the more we're able to really identify that. Yeah. And while it still hurts, um, when we know that it's not us, when we know that God allowed it, um, mm -hmm. because he knew that we would have the space mm -hmm. to empathize with that situation, um, that, is, that only creates a path for, for him to say, we're, we're ready for more, we're ready for greater. Absolutely. That speaks to all authority comes from God. She sees you as a representative of authority, but also a representative of God. I know this is a secular situation. No, this is not the church. But all authority is appointed by God. <laughs> whether you are the president, whether you are in Congress, whether you are a pastor, whether you are a mama, all authority comes from God. You are a representative of God. And how are you in that situation? Uh, you can either represent God well <laughs> or represent God poorly. But innately, that mother sees you as a representative of God, because I'm sure when she gets home, she knows that 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 I'm sure many of us say, God, why would you allow this person to do this? Why are you allow this authority? We automatically see we automatically see God moving and and working through authority. <laughs> we want we 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 want justice. We we uh, we our goal is that all authority represents God and and they they represent authority, and that's what you were to that mother, and. As you, as you did not cuss her out, <laughs> you, you know, called her back or whatever else and got and, and, and everything worked out. That's representing God well. And that speaks to who God is, whether you said God or not, <laughs> whether you uh, talked about the Bible or read the passages of scripture or not. When you represent God in such a way, such as that, when you show empathy, empathy is a, is a work. And, and sympathy and, and forgiveness is a work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, and that's not that's not of the world. It's not. It is not in our nature to not cuss people out. It is human nature that when somebody comes for you, come for them. But when you act outside of that, <laughs> and you show them love, empathy, compassion, whatever else, you are representing God, and you haven't even said the word God. That's what it is to be a witness in the world. That's what it is to be a disciple in, on our jobs. We don't have to necessarily wave a Bible to people's face and smack them over the head talking about, I know the scripture and all that. Just show empathy. <laughs> show grace. And you are being a representative of God, especially when you're in those spaces of authority. So that's, that's real good. Um, so David... Uh, uh, trusted God. Perhaps these mistakes. I'm, I'm, I'm getting recompense for the mistakes that I've made. But even in the, in the midst of my mistakes, I know that God will show me grace at the end of it. So I don't have to say nothing. I don't have to endure. I don't have to uh, fight back. I can endure. Secondly, David knew that these accusations against him were wrong. They were false. He was called a murderer, but David had not laid a finger on Saul's family. He said, the, 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 the Shimei said, you murdered, you murdered my family, you murdered Saul. It's a lie. Now, David should have murdered Saul. As y'all remember, David was, had all kind of uh, spears hurled at him. And for the last part of his life, Saul did his best to hunt him down and to kill him. 
And David had plenty of opportunities to slit his throat, if I can just be honest. He had plenty of opportunities to kill him dead right where he stood. But he said, no, touch not that. I cannot touch the anointed of the Lord. <laughs> I'm going to trust God and believe that he will bring me out of this. I remember that. Yes, yes, ma'am. So David said, I, so David did not kill Saul. Saul killed himself. But because of his bitterness, he, he Shimei believed that David did it. So he, that's why he was coming for him. That's why he was screaming at him. Because, but he was alive. But did David try to did, did David try to defend himself? Did he say no? I didn't kill. He didn't even say that. Many of us said, "Now look, now I didn't kill him." David didn't even say that. He didn't say a mumbling word. Christ on the cross did no wrong. Did he say I, I ain't did no wrong? No. Never said mumbling word. Did not defend himself. So when we are in a predicament where we're being lied on, cheated, talked, lied on, and you know the truth, don't resist the adversity, but endure it. <laughs> Help us, Holy Ghost. Endure it. Because these adversities are making you stronger. Y'all want to hear it? But it's the truth. They're making you stronger, a stronger leader. They're making you a stronger worker. They're making you a stronger child of God, a stronger disciple, a stronger minister of the gospel, a stronger mother, a stronger father. Endure the adversities. Holy Ghost, help us to endure the adversities because at the end of this, they are making us stronger. They are. They're teaching us patience. They're teaching us long suffering. They're teaching us how to be faithful and have faith in the midst of dark times. They're teaching us to trust and depend solely and utterly upon the Lord. God is shaping us and making us and molding us and strengthening us. Endure the adversity because it's making you stronger. Help us, Lord. Woo! Because I'm telling you, I'm saying these words, but I got to live by myself. <laughs> in the situation that I want to be strong. <laughs> well, 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 hey, if you're not strong, you cannot defend against the attacks of the enemy. I know. You got to be strong so that you can fight against the, the, the attacks of the enemy. This is spiritual warfare. Yeah, I understand. A strong uh, 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 believer, a general in his army, so that you can go about leading other folks. In trusting God and having faith in God. It's making us stronger. But let's be real about it, all right? When people, somebody slap you, disrespect you, cuss you out, um, what will people think of you for not defending your reputation? They're, they're going to give you a soft for punk that you can run over. And yes, like, sir. we saw that last year when, when Chris Fox yes, um, got smacked by Will Smith. Yes, Yes, and a lot sir. of people say, "How can we defend yourself, Dan?" Yes, sir. <laughs> but but all the jokes. Yes, sir. Yep, you soft, you weak. All right, they think that they think that they can come for you because you're not going to defend yourself. Maybe I can do it too. <laughs> and 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 time passes, and I'm sure people say all kinds of stuff about this situation, and I'm sure David may have felt holy in the situation, but thought about it a little later and be like, man, I should have killed him where he stood. I I'm sure about it because he was he was flesh just like the rest of us. We have moments of vulnerability. <laughs> he said, man, I should have knocked him out. I should have knocked him out. <laughs> Talk to me crazy. Y'all ain't going to be with me. Y'all, 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 I'm here. <laughs> but, but David, go ahead, Fallon. Oh, I was just going to say, um, yeah, I've had those moments. That's why I try to just try to make the best decision at that time, because I, I do tend to do that if I don't do something. Hold on. If I don't do something um, in a way that I think I should have handled it, then it it does really upset me. I'd be like, I should have said that. I right, should have right. did that. Hey, let me tell you, I think about that. I, mean, I should have did that. But we, I got to get out of here. I got a few minutes. So go with me to 2 Samuel 19, 18. 2 Samuel chapter 19. Verse 18, the second part of verse 18, 2 Samuel 19, verse 18. 
And this is how David, this is what happened. Because David trusted the Lord, this is what happened. This was this was some time later. This was three chapters later, okay? Three, four chapters later. Verse 19, the end, the end of 18. Y'all there? Say amen if you got it. So I know y'all with me. Second Samuel 19, 18. Let me know y'all there. Just give me some signal. Give me something. Amen. Thumbs up. Amen. Wave your hand. All right. It says, as the king was about to cross the river, Shimei fell down before him. So some time later, after he cut them out, threw rocks at him, lied on him. My lord, the king, please forgive me, he pleaded. Forget the terrible thing your servant did when you left Jerusalem. May the king put it out of his mind. I know, I know how much I have sinned. This is why I have come here today, the very first person in Israel to greet my Lord. The, oh, I'm the Lord, the king now? Oh, okay. Uh, then Abishai, son of Zerua, said, Shimei, this is, this is, this is his, uh, this is his guard, y'all. Abishai, son of Zerua, Shimei should die. If you remember that while ago, he cursed you. You are the Lord. You are now the king. You are now the Lord's anointed king. That's what he said. Who asked your opinion? David exclaimed. Why uh, have you become my adversary today? This is not the day for execution. For today, I am once again the king of Israel. Then turning to Shimei, David vowed your life should be spared. <laughs> Y'all, he fell down at his feet. Bible says, even when my enemies and my foes came up against me, I don't witness they were stumbling and fall. She mm -hmm. made, fell down at his feet, begging for forgiveness. I have sinned. I have messed up. I shouldn't have said what I've said it. People of God, if you're in a predicament and you've been lied on and cheated on, don't seek revenge. Wait for God to act. I'm a witness that God will act. Don't defend yourself. Don't try to, to, to take revenge. Wait for God to act. And in this story, I see God's grace at play. Because people of God, all of us are Shimei. You thought you was David. No. Uh-uh. You Shimei. <laughs> because uh 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 because we curse God. You're not going to be honest and, and real with me. We lie on God. Before we gave our life to Christ. And after we gave our life to Christ. We said all kind of crazy stuff on God. Lied on God did this and God did that. And because of this, we deserve to be put to death. Just like Shimei. Deserve death, hell, and everything. But God, just like David said, no, don't do it. He showed us grace and he said, don't kill him when he died on the cross. I'll take the penalty for they sin. You can shout and say amen if you want to. And amen. because of it, we now understand and now we at the feet of God begging for forgiveness. <laughs> Please forgive me, God. <laughs> Please uh, uh, take, put the thought out of your mind. Throw it into the sea of forgiveness. So, I lied. I cheated. I, mis I talked about you crazy, God. God, forgive me. I sinned against you. Yeah, yeah, hear me. We shimmy it. All right? And God showed us grace. And David was a representative of God's grace. And we must be the representative of God's grace in our own situations, on a job, in the school, what Christina was just talking about, people are hurting. And yes, they may cuss you out. Yes, they may get mad at you. But show them the same grace that God showed you. See the hurt. See the pain. And be a representative of God's grace. That perhaps through your life, they may see God. <laughs> they may experience God. 
they may be drawn closer to him. Be a representative of his grace. That perhaps they will be saved. Perhaps they will fall at the feet of God and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. I repent. That's all I got. That's 701. I'm sorry for, for giving you a little extra minute, but any last comments, questions, or, or concerns? I'm going to take it into 702. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I miss y'all. <laughs> but, um, I, in that same instance that I had experienced, her son was in the room with me when he heard his mother um, going off on me. And when I got off the phone, he looked at me. And he said, "Miss Thurman, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry my mom said those things to you. You did not deserve that. You didn't deserve her to say those things to you. And when I tell you this child <laughs> runs us up and down that school <laughs> from the day it starts to the day it ends with just out of, out of control, he normally is. That was the most centered I'd ever seen this child. Um, and I told him, I told him then, I said, you know, you don't have to apologize for something mom did. That wasn't on you. You didn't do it. You don't have to apologize. He said, but you're so kind to me. You're so nice to me. And I, and I feel bad, you know, now this is, you know, on my way, walking him out to her car <laughs> for pickup because he had gotten suspended that day. <laughs> but um, I realized in that moment, you know, these moments are so much bigger than us. They're so much bigger than our encounters. Um, you know, when um, Reverend Anderson talked about the customer, the onlooker who watched the whole ordeal, um, and witnessed her response in that moment and felt the need to defend um, her. I, I just, I recognize so much how these moments are so much bigger than us. Um, and when I look at David, David's heart was after God because David never forgot what God did for him. Mm -hmm. David never forgot how God restored him after all the mistakes he had made. And I think that's why he was so quick to say, no, we're not going to condemn him. I'm, I'm going to, we're going, like he's here and he's asking forgiveness. Like it's done. It's over with. Um, I feel like that is the key. That is the key to um, being able to really do this work and to make this work more natural to us. Um, so I, I, I was really blessed by this, this study. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Thank you all for blessing this flow. Amen. Thank you all for being here tonight. Appreciate you all for just saying, sharing your stories. And um, I pray that it, it was a I just got one question for the first lady really quickly. Do, do you have my phone number? I got it, Rev. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, let us um, just pray out on tonight. Let us, let us pray out. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are thankful for this opportunity that you've given us to share together. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for the opportunity to learn from your word. And we pray, oh God, that your word will be applied to our lives, that it will be applied to our actions. Help us, Lord God, to be representatives of your grace. Help us, oh Lord, to allow you to defend us. Give us the strength Oh God, to trust you, and even when it seems like things won't turn around, give us faith to know, oh God, that in the end, God, you will always act on our behalf. Father God, it may take some time for you to act, oh God, and in the meantime, give us strength and faith to trust and believe in you, God. Empower each of your people here on tonight, Father God. Pour onto them your supernatural power, your Holy Ghost anointing, oh God, that will give us, oh God, that will give us the space, oh God, to be your representative, oh God. We thank you, Lord God. Our hearts are open and willing, oh God, but for you to grow us, for you to make us stronger, oh God. We're willing, oh God, to be your disciples, oh God, so that someone else, oh God, will be saved 
will be delivered, that someone else may know you, oh God, in the pardon of your sins, that someone else may experience you, oh God, that someone else, oh God, may be, Father God, uh, uh, obtain your grace, your, 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 your saving grace, oh God, your prevenient grace, God, in the name of Jesus, use us, Lord God, so that someone's life can be restored and so that someone's life, oh God, they, they may experience the life, oh God, the everlasting life, oh God, that you give each and every one of us. We thank you now. We give you glory for what you want to do. We honor you and claim it done in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And we say amen. Amen. Amen.